Today, we are going to be analyzing the games of the Future Sight AI because there's actually a long line. So instead of playing, we'll be watching the games right now and seeing how does the bot react? Does it understand how to make predicts? Does it understand concepts like sacrificing? We'll be able to see how well can a Future Sight AI actually mimic the abilities of human beings. Okay, and we get our first game and it's like kind of like a normal versus steel type. So good matchup for the AI right now. We'll see how does it actually play though. So double iron bash gets it, it basically clicked a stab move nothing really like nothing really groundbreaking right here it clicked a powerful move versus the normal type but i am interested to know how did it decide to lead melmetal because it's obviously not stealth rock melmetal right so how did it get that idea to lead melmetal is it because it's just really good versus normal types what what happened here basically so obstagoon is going to be using body press most likely i wonder if the ai knows its body press okay so it does know its body press apparently like you would switch Corviknight because you expect body press, right? So, was the AI, did the AI figure that out? Like, oh, iron defense must be paired with body press. I'm not sure if it figured it out or if it just decided to switch out. Very interesting, actually. Rocky helmet, iron defense. Okay, okay. And let's see what happens now. Obstacle, body press crit. Unfortunate. Body press kills. Okay, that's good. So the AI gets a one nothing lead early on, and. I'm very interested to know how he knew to switch the Melmetal out. Did he just know that Iron Defense comes with Body Press, or did he know he was doing very little damage, so he had to switch out? That's very interesting, what the bot did right there. Now another interesting thing, will the bot sacrifice Corviknight or not? How does it evaluate value, basically, right? Because Corviknight... See, it preserved Corviknight here, but if I was playing, I would probably sacrifice Corviknight, because Corviknight it isn't really going to be useful, right? It can at best roost on Chansey, right? So, yeah, differently from how I would have played it. Heavy Slam. Okay. Yeah, that's the standard play. Anyone would have made that play. Very interesting. And obviously Mono Normal versus Mono Steel isn't going to be the best judge right now. But it's still very interesting to see how it uh, uh, goes about the situation. Like here, does it sacrifice Celesteela or Corviknight? Oh, it doesn't even need to sacrifice. Okay. Heavy Slam, good damage. Really good damage. Do these run Protect? Um, if it has Protect, it would use it right now. And then, really interesting right now. He goes to Extra Drill. Which is, I, f I guess it's a fine play. I think the AI likes to preserve Pokemon. It doesn't like to sacrifice it and probably... If I had to guess, I don't know anything about the code. If I had to guess, it evaluates a living Pokemon as valuable, right? So it kept Celesteela alive, it kept Corviknight alive in situations where a human probably would have sacrificed it. So very interesting from the AI right now. And see, this is another interesting thing right now. Extra Jill, it switched out of the Linoon, probably because it knows Linoon, Linoon outspeeds, right? But in practice, Linoon, Linoons don't run that much speed EVs, right? They don't run maximum speed. So it would be interesting to see, does it, did it understand that and switch anyway? Or did it switch expecting to get outsped? Close combat does 51, Aegis Slash doing decently well. Curse Chansey, this guy is like a low ladder guy, so it's kind of obvious, especially with the bad matchup, that a Steel type would win. But still very interesting to understand how the ai is making its decisions right now it looks like it it loves to preserve pokemon it doesn't like to sacrifice anything that's what it looks like at least um the naked eye right now how does it handle the regigigas does it toxic does it close combat does it understand that the regigigas is a big threat okay so it didn't understand the threat that is regigigas it didn't understand that toxicing and then potentially even sacrificing age slash would be worth it completely so See, now it's spiking. It doesn't understand the threat. And like a human being, right? When a human being sees Regigigas, they know that, okay, I have to deal with it before slow start. They know that. But it appears the AI doesn't really understand the urgency of Regigigas. So we're going to see how it plays out right now. It doesn't seem to understand that urgency. It's, it's going and getting spikes up right now. I don't even know why. Okay, it goes back to Aegislash on the Heat Crash, 41. And are we going to see a choke? How will he actually beat Regigigas right now? Really interesting, actually. He goes to Melmetal now. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. It doesn't look like it's no. It doesn't look like it knows what it's doing right now versus that Regigigas. A human being would have clicked Toxic on the Regigigas and won the game, basically, right? I wonder if it. I don't. I don't even know what the AI was thinking. 
There are like some options, right? Did it think that Flow Start didn't account for anything or what? What was going on? Okay, because switching to Pharaoh Thorn was bad and then setting spikes up is even worse, right? You're not getting any value from it. So, yeah, and it's using Protect here when Reggie could have used Substitute. So it doesn't really understand the game right now, but I have to give it a lot of credit. It, see, it's protecting right now when Reggie Gigas can use Substitute anytime, right? So it doesn't quite understand the game right now, it looks like, right? Again, it's going to Aegis Slash, and I'm assuming right now that it doesn't understand that, you know, sometimes it's okay to sacrifice Pokemon. It doesn't understand that completely, because any human would have sacrificed Aegis Slash to get Toxic on Reggie, right? So it doesn't understand, you know, relative value. And he's doing this bizarre switching thing. I don't know exactly what's going on right now. So there's a lot of work to be done, but really impressive from the AI, AI to get that lead. But now it's just kind of, you know, falling apart versus the Regigigas. See, it's doing 2021, which is actually big damage, but why did it wait so long to do it? Why did it sacrifice AG, sacrifice Celesteel, and now it's sacrificing Corviknight too. So why is it doing all this, right? Okay, Corviknight dies too. Yeah, yeah, a um, little bit unfortunate, right, in the AI right now. He goes to Pharaoh now, but again, what's Pharaoh going to do? He needs to understand to use Melmetal or Extra Drill. It's too focused on preserving Pokemon, it looks like. Heat Crash, that dies. Extra Drill again. Extra Drill dies here too. Now Melmetal is going to die. And Heat Crash is going to win the game. So a complete choke by the AI, it didn't understand the game situation, basically. And would have started a new game now. Let's open the new game. So it's using like a Trick Room team. And a Trick Room team is basically... I see I'm number two in the queue right now. So a Trick Room team is relatively straightforward because you just lead Trick Room, Healing Wish, and then do whatever you want, right? But my concern right now is that a human would use Healing Wish, right? But if this AI values individual Pokemon a lot, like we've seen in the last game, maybe it will never use Healing Wish. And Healing Wish is important for a Trick Room team. So it's going to be interesting to see if it ever uses Lunar Dance or Healing Wish or whatever it may be. It's going to be interesting to see if it understands the value it provides. Yeah. So it goes straight to Melmetal. Okay. At this point, is it going to be scared of Earthquake? Is it going to double Iron Bash? And it should outspeed, right? Yeah, 65. 58. Okay, maybe not, but... Okay. Let's see that double iron bash. One, two, okay. I'm assuming the AI didn't expect to be outsped. I mean, even I didn't expect it, right? So will it switch out or sacrifice Mel? See, this is the weird thing right now. Why did it choose to sacrifice Mel Metal now, but in the previous game we saw it refused to sacrifice Pokemon? So what changed in the middle? Why is it now more comfortable with sacrificing Mel Metal? Because if I was playing this, I wouldn't sacrifice Melmetal. I would go to perhaps, you know, Cresselia or Porygon. I wouldn't have sacrificed right now. And see, it still doesn't understand the Runer the Runeridges is really slow. It doesn't understand it right now. So the Earthquake is going to kill the Marowak right now. Yeah, see, it didn't understand. It didn't understand. It assumed, okay, I must be slow in Trick Room, but it didn't understand that Runeridges is, you know, um, slower than everything, right? He goes to Camera Up now and... Does that mean he's understood he outspeeds Runa Regis? Does it, does it mean that right now? What does it mean right now? In fact, I think Camerupt is actually slower than Runa Regis, right? Yeah, very weird. Really weird play. To go Camerupt and then go Cresselia. Unless it's some high IQ Terminator move to get more leftovers on Cresselia. It doesn't really make sense at all right now. Okay, he goes to Vaporeon now. What is he going to do? He's going to Trick Room, right? No, he doesn't Trick Room. He goes to Porygon? Interesting, interesting. Did it go Porygon because it knew it had Water Absorb, or did it just go there as a generic Trick Room Teleport pivot? Now he goes to Tyranitar, let's see what Porygon does. Toxic, okay, good play. Good play. Now what does it do? Does it recover on a Bandit Attack potentially, or a Stealth Rock? Does it go Hatterene on a Stealth Rock? What does it do right now? I think as a human, I would click Recover right now. Okay, so it did, it did, it did understand that. Now, in this case, it didn't work, but it's a play a human would have made right there to recover. So now what's going to happen? Is it going to go to, for example, Cresselia on the Focus Punch? What is it going to do? If my understanding... Okay, so it sacrificed 
right now. Yeah, that's very interesting. In the previous game, it didn't sacrifice at all, but here it's sacrificing everything. It doesn't really care about preserving anything. So really interesting. He goes to camera up now, and we'll see what it can do. It's not really going to be doing much, it looks like, right? So he mega evolves, Earthquake does 78. He uses Earth Power, decent damage, actually pretty good damage. Now, does he is he going to sacrifice Camerupt? He's been sacrificing Melmetal and Porygon. Will he sacrifice Camerupt too? He does, right? So I would never make that play. I would go Cresselia, Trick Room, Lunar Dance, and then go back to Camerupt. So didn't understand the value of Camerupt, for example, right? So it's interesting to understand how it measures the game, right? Because if you think of any AI, right, the goal of an AI is to win. But how does it know it's winning? It has to have some form of measurement, right? So if it has six Pokemon, maybe it thinks it's winning, right? If it has only one Pokemon, maybe it thinks it's losing and its goal is to win, right? So understanding that value system is the key to understanding how to make decisions. So it Lunar Dance is now to heal up Hatterene. So it did understand some part of the game. It did understand that Trick Room into Mystical Fire but it's going to lose, unfortunately. Let's see if it opens up the next game right now. Um, oh, it's my game. 